The Lord be with you. And the Lord stay with you. Good morning and a very warm welcome indeed to St Thomas's this Sunday morning. We start our service with our first hymn, Here I Am to Worship. Uh, as is our practice at the moment, of course, do please hum along behind your masks, we'll stay seated. Um, but the words will come up on the screen, so as I've said in previous services, do um, pray your way through uh, the words uh, as well as hum. Thank you. We begin our service with the prayer of preparation on page two of your red service books. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, bend us the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. God the Father forgives us in Christ and heals us by the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore put away all anger and bitterness, all slander and malice, 
and confess our sins to God, our Redeemer. We say together the first prayer on page three. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Will you please stand if you are able as we join the words of the Lord. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We join together in the words of the Collect on the screen. Lord God, defend your church from all false teaching and give to your people knowledge of your truth, that we may enjoy eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Will you please take a seat for our readings? The reading is taken from Corinthians 1, chapter 3, verses 10 to 17. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid. Which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though only as one escaping through the flames. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple, and that God's Spirit dwells in your midst? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is sacred, and you together are that temple. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Sarah. Will you please stand for our gospel reading which Amy will share us. For the gospel this morning, Tim asked if we could start at um, the passage where the woman, Samaritan woman, is at the well. This is the Gospel of the Lord according to John. 
Glory to you, Lord. Lord. This is John 19, sorry, John chapter 4, verses 19 to 26. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming, and has now come, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. God is Spirit and his worshippers must worship in the spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah, called Christ, is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. This is the one. I pray, Lord, that you will be in my words and in our hearts and minds this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Do please take a seat and I will see you So if I were to ask you, what does worship look like to you? What would you think of? Might it be this? Or this? Perhaps this? Or maybe this? Perhaps even for some of you, this? <laughs> With apologies to Mr. Senior. <laughs> Maybe that location could do with prayer rather than worship <laughs> at the moment. This is a more familiar scene of worship to us all, of course. This is uh, our service in Wotton, uh, in St John's there, two weeks ago. But joking apart, I think it's safe to say that pretty much everyone here will have different ideas about what for each one of us worship is. We'll place different emphases on the various aspects of what could be considered worship. We'll find that there are particular elements of it that have a special resonance for us. Although these may shift and change at different times of our lives as well. Perhaps also how we may feel at a given point in time, psychologically, emotionally, spiritually or physically. And we'll find that we each have different places in which we feel particularly attuned to worship as well. But I think there are a number of themes that will be common to all of us here when we consider what it is to be called to worship, which is what we're looking at in this Sunday's part of our sermon series on what it means to be church, called to be church. As I've said in previous weeks, when we've looked at being called to be scriptural and prayerful, um, these last six months, and especially those in which we were in complete lockdown right at the very start, have given us perhaps a unique opportunity as we've missed 
terribly the opportunity to meet together in church like we are at last doing now. Meet in our church buildings. That opportunity to consider what it is that we're missing so much. It's perhaps only when something is no longer there for us. Rather like it would be for Esther when we take her favourite toy away. That uh, we can objectively reflect on what it is that makes us so precious. Makes it so precious. So what are we called to do when we are called to worship? At its most basic, Christian worship is the offering of praise to God, in whatever form that may take. We'll come on to that in a bit. Worship is about placing ourselves in a particular posture before God, helping us to recognise who he really is, catching us up in the transformative life of the kingdom of God, It's something we're called to each and every day of our lives. Archbishop William Temple, who I'm finding um, is increasingly one of my spiritual heroes, if you like. I seem to be uh, quoting him with uh, more and more regularity in my sermons. Um, He said, the fundamental business of life is worship. At the root of all your being, your intellectual studies, the games you play, whatever it is, the impulse to do them well is and ought to be understood as being an impulse towards God, the source of all that is excellent. All life ought to be worship. And we know quite well that there is no chance that it will be worship unless we have times where we have worship and nothing else. On the one hand, the fundamental business of life is worship. As human beings, your and my primary purpose in life is to bring glory to God, to offer praise to God, to worship God. And to this end, continues Temple, all life ought to be worshipped. I think there's a tendency, if we're not careful, to think that what we do on Sundays only, when we come into a church building like this, is worship God. We come to some sort of special place, if you like, or a special frame of mind. But then as soon as we go out of the door afterwards, it's as if we leave our worship of God with our service books on our seats. We carry on with our normal lives for the other six and a half days of the week. Nothing, Temple says, could be or should be further from the truth. In the rather more contemporary words of um, a couple who wrote uh, this very good book, uh, Whole Life Worship, um, Sam and Sarah Hargreaves, they say, worship is more than just music, it's a lifestyle. That makes it a bit more 21st century, doesn't it, somehow? But I think um, that is absolutely true. Worship should be a lifestyle, a style of life, a style of living for each one of us. Each one of us is called not just to worship God in a building that looks like this one, and only on a Sunday, but to take our worship of God to wherever we go and whatever we do, to live a whole life of worship. (laughs) Think back a few moments to the image of the figure on the mountaintop, arms spread wide, praising God for the glories of his creation. I might be a bit more English in the way I show it, but one of the places I personally find myself most in touch with God and most full of praise to him for the wonders of his creation is exactly on a mountaintop like that. And yet, too, as Temple goes on to say, we know quite well there is no chance all life will be worship unless we do have times when we have worship and nothing else. 
And that's where times like this morning, times of gathered worship, when we pause the rest of our lives and come together with those who, like us, desire to come before God and praise him, why these times are so important to our faith. In our Gospel this morning, uh, the second part of the meeting between Christ and the Samaritan woman at the well, Jesus speaks to her of the people of Israel going up to Jerusalem to worship God in the temple at the heart of that city, as opposed to the Samaritans like her, whose worship took a different form and in a different place. There's a, a model um, that's uh, in Jerusalem. Uh, Claire and I had the privilege of, of going to Jerusalem while I was doing my training as, as part of a pilgrimage, and there is a vast model of um, uh, of the city of Jerusalem at the time of of Jesus, uh, and uh, this is the, the the part of that model that shows the enormity of the temple complex. Only a, a very few fragments of that, of course, now remain with the with the Wailing Wall in, in particular, uh, after it was destroyed by the Romans. Uh, but uh, at that time, at the time of Jesus, it was the belief of the people of God, and the belief contained in the Jewish law, that they met with him in the temple alone, this temple alone. Although this encounter was, was mediated by, uh, by the priests uh, who administered sacrifices on believers' behalf. The people, therefore, had to pay frequent visits to and from Jerusalem for the, for the major festivals in order to worship God, to make offerings to him, to pray and so on. But the consequence of Jesus' fulfilment of the law in his person was that the Lord's people no longer had to go up to Jerusalem to meet with God. At the moment of Christ's death on the cross, the curtain of the temple which separated the presence of God from those who came to worship him was torn in two. The law was fulfilled in the person of Jesus himself. And so it's through relationship with him, Jesus Christ, and not by any priests of the temple, that the Jews then, the Gentiles then, and we now are able today to encounter the full presence of God. St. Paul, in our reading from the first letter to his first letter to the Corinthians, uh, perhaps goes even further. Paul says that since God dwells through the presence of his Holy Spirit in these early Christians, then it's as if these women and men uh, themselves have become the temple. It's as if they themselves have taken on the sacredness of the presence of the Holy Spirit amongst them, and especially that they together, in Paul's words, are that temple. So for all that we're called to worship God throughout the whole of our lives, there is something extraordinarily special about coming together as the body of Christ, as us here today, in one place at one time to worship him. We, together, are that same temple. This worship, of course, takes many forms. There can be a temptation to think of worship uh, as being only some worship, rather than thinking of the act of worship in its entirety, this whole service, this whole act of worship. When we come into a posture uh, and place of worship like this, our chief purpose is to encounter the presence of God. It's not that over lockdown we were unable to come into the presence of God or worship at all. Indeed, some of you I know found that the very space of lockdown, the release from the relentlessness of daily routines and pressures and obligations, um, for some of our community that resulted in a profoundly positive shift in your relationship with God, deepening your awareness of his presence in your life. And I hope as well that um, our ability to come together at times uh, to, uh, to use the one or using the wonders of technology was a positive way in which to keep alive our connections with one another and with God. 
in some cases, like um, the extraordinary worship song, The Blessing. I don't know how many of you may have come across this. If you, if you haven't done, uh, search it on, uh, on the internet. It is the most amazing um, piece of worship. It was sung by um, dozens and dozens of worship leaders from churches of all denominations all across the UK. And then it, it, it became, uh, it went viral, as, as they say these days, and there were other versions all around the world. Um, and it was an opportunity that was created for God to move amongst us in a way that would never normally have been possible or even dreamt of in the first place. But for those of us who do decide to follow Jesus Christ, we are the body of Christ. And as one body, we are called to unity and to fellowship with one another, our brothers and sisters in Christ, both of which happen more deeply when we're physically together in worship, each made in God's image and reflecting something of his glory. And when we come together in an act of worship, such as this morning, we encounter God in, I suggest, five ways which I'll speak about very briefly. In fellowship. Look around you now. This is our fellowship in front of God. These wonderful people, your friends, your neighbours. In fellowship with one another. We encounter something of God's image in one another, in our brothers and sisters. This is partly why sharing the peace is so important. Even if we can only see each other's eyes at the moment and only give each other virtual hugs and handshakes. We are acknowledging the presence of the image of God in the other one when we share the peace and they in us. Secondly, in some worship, perhaps most obviously, are expressions of praise and thanksgiving directed to God, modelled for us uh, in the Psalms. It's a form of prayer, a drawing near to our Heavenly Father in the hope and the expectation that he will draw near to us. Thirdly, in attending to God speaking through his word to us, through Sarah's reading, through Amy's reading. As we looked at a fortnight ago, we read and explore the Bible together in services like this because it's one of the principal ways God reveals his presence to us afresh through the truth of biblical witness and the presence of the Holy Spirit within us, we can become the kind of true worshippers, if you like, that the Father seeks um, to refer back to the passage in John, the words of Jesus to the Samaritan woman, the true worshippers, the worshippers in spirit and truth that the Father seeks. Fourthly, in our prayers for the world and for one another, what we pray for shapes the real character, the very character of our faith. It's often said that we become like what we worship. Similarly, what and whom we pray for, whether we're outward looking or inward looking, whether what we pray reflects the heart of God, the rule of his kingdom or the church's mission, can shape our faith and our lives deeply. And lastly, we come to God, we encounter God in our acts of worship as he gives himself to us in the sacrament, in the bread and the wine of Holy Communion. The substantial presence of God's grace in our lives. In coming to church this morning to worship, we come to give, not to get. We come first and foremost as an act of worship to God, to give the Lord our thanks and our praise. And it's only from that place that we receive from him. Giving, not getting. Giving and then receiving. We come together to worship in this one place that we might be sent out into the world 
dispersed amongst our communities, amongst our workplaces, our friends, our families. We gather together as, as, as church gathered, if you like, in the, in the little corner. And then we go out throughout um, all of that large a group of all of our connections, our friends, our families, our neighbours. Um, and we, we, we touch few people when we're gathered together as church, but when we go out taking that with us, we touch so many more, we reach so many more parts of society, scattered to continue our worship, wherever our lives may take us, bearing God's presence with us, carrying his spirit and his truth. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord, as we'll end the service later. My prayer this morning is that giving our worship to God this morning in all these different ways and in turn receiving from him his grace and his blessing. Each one of us, each one of you, will carry the fullness of his presence with you wherever he may lead you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <coughs> We join together in the words of the Creed on page 7 of your service books. If you are able to stand with you, please stand. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered to death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Richard is now kindly going to lead us in our intercessions. Do please take a seat. Thank you, Richard. as your people in this place today, dear Lord. Please keep us grateful for all of the good things in our lives, for the love and companionship of friends and family, for the warmth and fellowship of our church and Christian community, for the security of our streets, for the abundance of available food, for our access to public services like the NHS and so much else. Lord, let us never take these things for granted and help us to value them as precious and vulnerable things that may be lost in a moment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Despite this, Lord, we are all too aware that these are specially difficult and unpredictable times. At home, and much more so in poorer and more vulnerable countries across the world. So let us continue to hold in our thoughts, prayers and actions all those who suffer at present from COVID 
and the other illnesses that the same us, thinking especially of our friend Ginny Wetmore. Let us think of those who suffer the consequences of natural disasters, those who fear for their jobs and their livelihoods, those who suffer from war and our inhumanity to one another. We especially ask you, Lord, to equip and help all the leaders and people of power across the world so that they act with wisdom and humanity and compassion rather than selfish and narrow concerns, so that the common good is pursued and the poor and the vulnerable are helped. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we face an uncertain future together, help us, Lord, not to be passive in the face of so many problems, but to be creatures of hope and peace and encouragement and also laughter with one another. Help us to live out our faith in a giving and tolerant and a generous manner, however hard this may sometimes be. And of course it will be hard. Above all, Lord, let us remember that we are the precious children of a loving Heavenly Father who wishes only the best for us and is so happy when we turn to Him in good and bad times and worship Him at all times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. share the peace with one another at this point. Um, you're very welcome to stand and smile and give virtual hugs and whatever else you choose to do in the general direction of, of everybody else around. Um, but I'm afraid to know no handshaking or hugging, of course, um, permitted for the moment. Peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father. Peace from His Son, Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the triune God be always with you. And also with you. you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace as best we can. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be
we continue our service of Holy Communion with the uh, Eucharistic Prayer B on page 22. <coughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving we bring before you this bread and this cup and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you send the holy spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of all the saints May praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom is with you and in you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer and the contemporary day. As our Saviour taught us, so we praise Him. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. 
eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We join together in the first prayer of humble access on page 15. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, that in your manifold great mercies we are not worthy so much to gather at the crumbs under your table, that you are the same Lord, whose nature is always our mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our soul souls washed through his most precious blood, that we may have all world in him, and he in us. Amen. Um, as previously, uh, I am the, uh, the only one who takes the wine. Um, I will consume both now, and then I'll pop on my glass with my, my, my visor, and I will come down to uh, the top of the steps. Um, if you could please wait to be invited forward, um, if you sanitise um, your hands when you come up, uh, if you bread, I will just get a big cup of donating that for us as previously. Thank you very much. If you come forward, um, take your mask off, proceed from me, I will drop the rope that into my hand.
join together in the first prayer of the communion on page 60. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. We join together in our final hymn and worship the King for glorious above. quick notices before uh, we close the service. Um, next Sunday, of course, is at Watton, Sunday the 27th, uh, usual time, 10 o'clock, uh, BCP uh, communion. And then on the 4th, um, we're plotting, um, hopefully, to do a, um, a Benefice-wide um, harvest service. Um, things are in train on that. Um, more details will come as soon as we've got definitive information on that. But, um, Hopefully we get to be able to do something benefits wide in a really slightly special way. I think all of you have probably completed a contact details for me. If there are any of you that haven't, um, there are some by the door. If you want to keep in touch with us, do please take one and fill it in and pop it back to me. Um, that would be great. That way you can um, find out everything that's going on. We'll send emails to you and uh, all that good stuff. And a final notice I have remembered today, Graham doesn't need to remind me, Please leave your red books and anything else that you picked up on your chairs when you leave. Um, don't worry about that. We will deal with them on due course. But they, they get left for the, the standard 72 hours, uh, along with all of the chairs and everything else, uh, so that we are uh, COVID safe in that way. So please just pop them on the seats when you leave. If you could leave by that door, as usual, um, and if you could um, sort of if be invited to leave in, in, in good order, if that's all right. That would be And it has been lovely to see all of you here this morning. Thank you so much for coming. Um, it's great to have a, a, a really good turnout again. Uh, thank you, Esther, for providing the entertainment to all of us. <laughs> Esther Junior, that is. <laughs> Shall we please stand for the end of the service? God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love. Defend you on every side and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, 
be among you and remain with you and those you love always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Go well, be blessed, have a good day.